It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is the voice of a generation, a generation that's been without an acceptable face of goofy, misanthropic humour. Sure, we have new seasons of Curb Your Enthusiasm every decade, and The Simpsons and The Family Guy are still around, and we have the Judd Apatow movies and their offshoots, and actually, I'm full of crap. Pay no attention to me. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia started out with three actor friends in Los Angeles trying and often failing to get decent roles. Rob McElhenney, Glenn Howerton and Charlie Day got together to make a home movie built around Howerton visiting Day to borrow some sugar. Day instead reveals he has cancer and is glad of the chance to talk to someone else about it. Except Howerton just wants to get out of there. That short film, shot for next to nothing and yet it looks even cheaper, was pitched to networks as the pilot of a show about four friends in LA. How about that game against Dallas when Santa came out at halftime and we threw batteries? <laughs> the FX network bought the show on the condition that it was tweaked so that instead of LA-based actors, they now co-own a bar together, Paddy's Pub in Philadelphia. This meant they had a reason not to be destitute on the streets and still have time for hijinks. <laughs> Are you actually going to throw away all your convictions for a chance to get laid? I don't really have any convictions. Charlie Day is Charlie Kelly. Charlie is possibly a moron. I specialize in bird law mostly. Having divested himself of shares in his pub, Charlie is basically the janitor, given all the dirtiest, most disgusting jobs to do. Charlie work. Are you taking me seriously? Charlie's infatuated with the waitress, stalking her for most of the series, despite not actually knowing her name. I've been thinking about the restraining order. You're going to get rid of it? No, no, no. Oh. Charlie's relationship with his mother is complicated, and the possible identity of his father makes for much discomfort. Dad? Will you forget the goddamn cat for a second and listen to all the interesting things I have to say? You're being the worst sidekick right now. Glenn Howerton is Dennis Reynolds, and initially he seems relatively close to being a grounded individual. Uh, I'm gonna bang her tonight, probably around 10.30 or so. Now, I really don't want to do that, so all you have to do to stop me is call my cell phone by 10.30, and say, Dennis, you don't have to do Charlie work anymore. However, it becomes apparent that he is easily the most selfish person of a group of incredibly selfish people. You know, I'm posting up and they're gonna come to me. Overconfident, a sexual predator. You like it? Listen, listen, listen. I wanna be inside you. And a sociopath. Silence your mouth! She cannot properly see the dress because your disgusting body is ruining it! I can't believe I let you see me naked. Well, that was part of the... Possibly even a murderer. My father, Frank Reynolds, owned a sweatshop in Vietnam and is responsible yeah, right, well, for the well, deaths well, of well, thousands of people. Ah, Dennis becomes infatuated with himself, or even the idea of himself, inflated with self-belief, believing himself to be better than everyone else. I have never met a person who does not like dogs yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> there are plenty of us out there. Uh... Chet, okay, trust me, we're just afraid to admit it because we feel like we're going to be judged by people like you. Dennis's breakdowns when he has those brief moments of self-awareness are fantastic. I think we all like watching douchebags get their just desserts. I'm calm, man. I'm cool as a cucumber. It's all good. It's all good. I'm talking to myself, but that's just because I've, I've got shit to say, you know? Dennis's sister, Deandra Reynolds, also known as Sweet D, was originally just meant to be the most normal member of the group, someone to contrast with the guy's antics but actress Caitlin Olsen pushed to make D as funny and as loathsome as the men. Yeah, it's like we were having sex and the whole yeah. time I was like, what's become of me? And I realized I hit rock bottom. In the last vestiges of the original pitch, D has a dream to make it as an actress and is unaware of how untalented she really is. She also believes herself to be a fantastic mimic and a comedian. Yeah, everybody look at me. I'm one part robot and three parts asshole. <laughs> okay, we all have our hopes and dreams, Charlie and the series takes great pleasure in disavowing her of those beliefs and dreams. American girl, blue eyes, blonde hair. <laughs> Olsen is a fantastic physical comedian and can sell her character's constant switch between wounded and obnoxious at the drop of a hat. It would be a shame if my account of what happened was different from his, and then boom, we plow. <laughs> Rob McElhinney plays Mac, real name Ronald McDonald. Mac is probably the character that changes the most throughout the series. Mac is extremely Catholic, has a drunken mother and a jailbird father who's often trying to kill him. Uh, my name is Ronald McDonald, and... <laughs> <laughs> I named him that. I went to get my pump on, but I couldn't get my pump on. He's a gym bro who believes himself to be a martial arts master. Hi, up, up, hot, hot, hi! Who's also in denial about his sexuality for most of the series. I know we've oh. never said this as a group, but... Uh, Max, what, gay. Max Gay? Yeah, Max Gay. He's yeah. gay. 
Rob McElhenney is fearless in the role, gaining 50 pounds as a joke for one season and then going to the other extreme to become ripped in later years, culminating in the acclaimed interpretive dance sequence at the end of season 13, when Mac finds his pride. After ratings for the first season were not amazing, FX insisted on adding some star power to the ensemble, and Danny DeVito was added to the cast as Frank Reynolds, nominally the father of Dennis and Dee. Try this on for size. Your mother's dead. What? No, she's not dead. We're getting divorced, though. Frank had made a fortune with clothing sweatshops and other nefarious activities, yet he feels he needs to experience more of life. With that, he becomes Charlie's roommate to really see what true squalor is. Frank is a lousy father, was a terrible husband, and completely lacks empathy for anyone else. Do you sell condoms? No. Whether Frank is a bigger sleaze than the son he raised is open to debate, but Frank as a person has almost no redeeming features at all. My cream pie taste and know-how, combined with your underpaid labor force, we could corner the cream pie market. With five main characters, all of whom are utterly obnoxious, they will sometimes take it in terms to be just a little less smug, a little bit more empathetic and less evil in order to play up the worst aspects of other characters. The whole purpose of buying the boat in the first place was to get the ladies nice and tipsy topside so we can take them to a nice comfortable place below deck and you know they can't refuse because of the implication. Plots often revolve around schemes, japes, pranks, revenge, contests, sex, and or money. It's really dark. No, no, it's not dark. You're misunderstanding me, bro. I'm, I'm, I think I am. Yeah, you are. <laughs> because if the girl said no, then the answer obviously is no. No. But the right. thing is, is she's not going to say yeah. no. She would never say no because of the implication. There's trying to beat a drinking record on a cross-country flight. There's the poop in the bed that's more interesting to the gang than anything going on in Dee's life. To be honest with you, I wouldn't mind seeing how this whole situation really works. It's fascinating. There's Charlie trying to work out if his mother is a prostitute making Lethal Weapon 5, D becoming a star. Suck my dick. We also see some interesting and fun peripheral characters for whom the writers can take to some terrible places without having to reset at the end of each episode. So wait, 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 wait. What are you gonna do, punch him in the face? Throw him? You gonna maybe work the body a little? That's not gonna help. No, no, it's not gonna <sighs> help, I'll tell you why. It doesn't unbang your mom. There's Cricket, who overcame a childhood crush on D, became a priest, and eventually a crack whore. There's the beef with the McPoyles, and the ongoing situation with the Ponderosas. And of course, there's the waitress, who never escapes her rut of alcoholism and isolation. Yeah, he's been with me. Oh, shut up, bitch! Who the hell is this, Charlie? At the time of writing this, the series has run for 14 seasons, with additional seasons planned. During the run of the show, the main actors staged an It's Always Sunny live musical presentation. Most men find me to be an 8 or 9 out of 10. Interrupt the night man. Oh, champion of the sun. sun, 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 sun. Oh. And have appeared in other TV and movie projects. Charlie Day has appeared in multiple films such as The Horrible Bosses Cinematic Universe and The Pacific Rim Cinematic Universe. Caitlin Olsen starred in several seasons of The Mick and Glenn Howerton in AP Bio. These extracurricular activities go some way to explain the structure of some of the later seasons, such as Dennis's limited appearances in season 13. McElhaney is starring in Mythic Quest, Raven's Banquet, a series where he stars as an ego-driven creative director of a video game company, along with cricket actor David Hornsby. Oh, yeah. Right. On the phone? Yeah. Oh, good. Right. I have tickets for the price of zero. <laughs> <laughs> Put on the auto motion plus. D E N N I S. The dentist system. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. And I remember it. One important element of the show that helps set it apart from other shows is the use of library music, particularly tracks by Heinz Keisling with his track Temptation Sensation being instantly associated with the show. This is ham soaked in rum. Uh, Charlie Kelly, co-counsel, a background in bird law. Dude, you're wheezing now. You slow down. Breathe and eat separately. This is what America's about, okay? Being able to eat at any That's rate you want to eat. Shut up. You don't need to understand how Invigoron works because somebody above you does. How is it possible to enjoy watching five characters who are vile, obnoxious, clueless, classless, idiotic, depraved, bigoted, self-destructive, and any number of adjectives? Smooth. Very, very smooth. How is it that it's Always Sunny gets a pass on the language and attitudes of its characters. Uh, between the ages of 18 and 21, simply making investments. But not for early deposits. 
Well, deposits are part of the withdrawal. Maybe we need to remind ourselves that there are actually people with ugly hearts like these five. I think he's playing the scumbag who comes in off the street to bang your mom. Maybe the void for outlandish crude humor just needs to be filled, and the few modern R-rated films tend to be crass without much wit. Or is it just funny? <laughs> Do the characters grow? Well, Max certainly does. It's not as severe as a blackout, because I remember bits and pieces. I like to call it browning out. Dennis goes from being slightly creepy to utterly malevolent. A digital copy of your thumbprint has been sent as your e-signature, confirming your full consent. Dee can't let go of her acting dreams. I'm a uh, throat cancer from, 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 from eating some, 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 some bad pussy. Charlie will go to any lengths in order to get the waitress. Is that it? And Frank is just a piece of shit. To clarify, characters growing doesn't mean they necessarily become better human beings. They just change over time. First alcoholic, dairy-based protein drink, four bodyguards, five bodyguards! In years to come, It's Always Sunny will likely be a defining show of the period in which it was made. See that? That is 11% body fat. Yeah, the only place what year was that photo taken? No, 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 not taking questions right now, Mac. The same way people define the 1990s by Friends and Seinfeld, or the 70s by All in the Family or Three's Company or Different Strokes. Right? I have faith that what I'm saying makes sense. Got it. Okay, so there's no way to have a rational conversation with you. No. It's a reflection of us, or at least how vain, petty, selfish, and greedy we really are. I'm gonna say homie. Oh, come on. I'm gonna say bro. Are you serious? I'm gonna say my babe. Well, now you're just stereotyping. Say folks show. I was always aware of the show, but I never paid much attention to it. I sampled it when I first had Netflix a long, long time ago, but it didn't really click with me. They were a bunch of obnoxious douchebags with edgelord humor, but years later, the show was still running and seemingly popular as ever. So a few years ago, I put the show on again, and I didn't stop until I had watched every episode. And it was amazing. Bizarre. Bizarre in a good way. No. Sure, there were times when it just felt moronic and they were going after low-hanging fruit. And at other times, the repetition of episodes with sequels to not particularly great shows was a bit grating. Apart from that, there were so many brilliant moments that the show has now become one of my favorite comedies of the last few decades. I did start with some stuff that was slightly less offensive, but turns out they're a very lovely community, so I really had to, I had to dig deeper. It's rare for a modern comedy in that the characters do not become appreciably better people. It's rare in that it doesn't go for the heartstrings. Just dumb, gut-busting laughter. You're gonna go blue? Don't go blue. That tells me that you're just not funny at all. That's it. You can go home. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below, or check out some of our other videos.